Hello, hello, welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy XI. So, I figured since I've been going ham on Nizel, um, I'm up to 425 solo. Uh, at 75 still. It's challenging, but not too challenging. They actually just implemented a double EXP campaign too, and so if the uh, eChad ring while I'm running a nice while, I'm getting merits simultaneously. I've seen as high as 8,800 experience points per monster, which I find ridiculous, but that's New Age Final Fantasy XI for you. Now, I've read online that Nizel counts for Assault Rank, and we completed it, um, you know, once for the five, but I've completed it since then, you know, successfully at least over 10 times because I've got the five I've got the five guaranteed ones that I won that that I did five floors on each time but then I've got some other successful runs I did from one to one to five just to build tokens and to try to get mythic weapons so we should be getting we should be getting an assault rank here You'll be hearing from President Naja any day now. Poor thing, you'll wish you stayed, you'd stayed a worthless pile of beaten pulp. Okay, so I guess we just gotta talk to, to Naja. Sometimes when you run in here, when you're ready to rank up, you just automatically get a cutscene, and that's what I was waiting for, and I don't know why. I forgot to mention to you about Mog Lockers. Seeing as we're so concerned for the welfare of our employees, we offer a Mog Locker service to each mercenary for their own personal use. You know how much of a hassle it can be carrying around all your equipment and materials with you while you're trying to do your job. Of course, you gotta turn out your own pockets for it. You're gonna have to talk to Fabrun in Stone Serpent Square if you want details on how to use a mug locker. Except, we've already done that. Uh, surely that's not my rank up quest, right? You know, for a private, you're doing your fair share of work. Good to see. Don't be afraid to give it your all. You see, your efforts have a direct effect on my little company's profit. Profit. It really does bring a tear to my eye to see you mercenaries slogging through the mud for Salahim Sentinels. But I can't help but feeling a bit jumpy lately. There's this guy making some mention of darkness approaching. He suggested I make myself a charm to ward... How do you even roll an R on the word ward? Eh, whatever. It's it's not like I'm scared or anything, but us mercenaries have got to be prepared, you know. Anyway, he says I need to use something like two imp wings to get the right amount of protection. But I'm so busy keeping track of you lot and your activities, I've only been able to collect one. Calmwind, I want you to bring me the last imp wing. If you do this for me, you might see a sudden jump in your mercenary rank. What do you mean I... What, what do you mean, what do I mean? Didn't I explain to you about mercenary ranks? Well, that's what we have Abquaba for. Abquaba! Y yes, ma'am! Prepare to recite Articles 1, 2, and 3 for the Mercenary Assessment Guidelines. Article 1. Follow President Naja's orders without question. Article 2. Fulfill President Naja's request without fail. Article 3. Run President Naja's errands without complaint. <coughs> that is all. Do you get to drift? I can't do the Mithra and R roll. I'm sorry. I try. Yeah, I got it, you stupid bitch. Basically, mercenaries who do what they're told will find themselves climbing the ladder faster than those who ask stupid questions. Are you still here? Yeah, basically the reason I decided to go ahead and start getting some mercenary rank now is... Like, I read online, you know, if you... Proceed with Rhapsodies up to a certain point, they will tell you to be on a certain mission. And out of all the things I've gotten out of random Nizel things, I don't have any imp wings. If I'd known I needed that for the rank up, I would have kept some, because I have killed plenty of imps in there today. But, uh, to get an imp wing, we can either... I don't know, we could probably just buy one off the auction house, maybe? They'd probably be under alchemy. Uh, 
probably pretty cheap, I would imagine. Although there might not be any, and if there's not any, we can just go kill some imps. Uh, out at, like, Azuf Isle or whatever. That's probably why I don't even remember this particular rank up. This is the rank up to Private First Class, which will grant us access to five new assaults, which we might be able to do easier than the remaining Private Second Class ones we've got. Although I will try to get those done someday. Some of them are just too hard to solo at 75. Uh, due to the objective, what you gotta do. But, uh, I might, I might give them a go anyway, since I get, um, I get assault tags every 10 minutes now, thanks to that Rhapsody's item. That Rhapsody's item is, is OP for assault progress. Like, you have no idea. If you could go back to 2006 and tell somebody that one day you'll be able to do assaults every 10 minutes, they would, like, call you insane and, like, chop you in half. I wonder what she's crafting. Dark steel ingots. Oh, okay. Got a smith over there. I still haven't bothered leveling any of Calmwood's crafting skills yet. Yeah, I figured this would be a nice, chill, possibly shorter episode. I mean, it's pretty minor. I'm just going to try to show off some more assaults. Um, and mainly the, the mercenary rank up mission. Like, I wanted to go ahead and rank up my mercenary rank because you get longer duration. I believe you get longer duration sanction. Um, I believe you earn more Imperial standing from... Um, dicks. And, um... Of course, you get to start working towards the next rank, right? Like, I could have just stayed a private second class and continued climbing Nizel Isle, but I figured... Hey, wait a minute, you know, even if I succeed every single time I, I do a, a climb, instead of just going in at floor 1 for tokens and mythics, uh, you know, that's, that's 25 more assault points all by itself. So like, eh, might as well, might as well rank up when I can. Also, interestingly, nowadays you don't even actually have to do these quests to rank up anymore. You can literally buy your mercenary rank badge from the Curio Moogle all the way up to First Lieutenant, as long as you have the rank points. Like, you can still only buy them one at a time, you still have to get the 25 assault rank points, but like, you can skip these cutscenes. I guess maybe they put that in because I guess maybe Japanese people don't like Naja, although I don't see how that's possible. She's like a Final Fantasy XI in-joke, like everyone was just like, man, this fucking bitch, you know. Give me my rank. The only thing in this world I believe in is money. It's the stuff from the other world that gives me the creeps. Brr. It gives me the chills just thinking about it. No, 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 you just listen. This is what they call the mercenary shakes. Right. You've done your job, so I suppose I'll bump you up to private first class. Now that you're private first class, you better act like it. I don't want to see those commissions rolling in. Hold on. Oh, you get a nice little, uh, text. Text log or whatever. Oh, also, I guess I'll show it off because I can. But you know how we talked to Abuqueba and he, uh,. He told us, like, when we said mercenary assessments, he said, you'll be getting a mention from Rainy Day now. Uh-huh. At the current pace, you'll be doomed to meet a meeting with not just spiky friend. If you want to dig yourself out of the pit, you got to hit the commissions agency and run up some successful assault missions. It's the only option left to you. That's, like, his basic line. Like, if you haven't earned at least, like, ten rank up points or whatever. Apparently he changes his dialogue for that like the closer you get to 25 and then at 25 he says you know she'll be wanting to hear from you any day now or whatever. So yeah that's, that's all like that. But uh yeah. In order to get the captain rank and I think actually first lieutenant as well you have to do every single assault 
Um, so we'll have to do all of them at some point. But uh, I don't know which ones for private first class I'll actually be able to do. I don't remember. I have to. I'll have to like look them up as I look at them, unless the uh, name of the mission strikes. Let's see. I want to say Lebro Supplies is one we should avoid for now. Let's see. Salt. Xi. Wiki, assault, blah, 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 blah. Okay, let's see. Deliver the provisions. An advanced unit sent to the Labros Caverns has met heavy resistance and is in need of reprovisioning. Your rest unit is to deliver rations to each member of the advanced unit. So, let's look at it here. This assault appears to have been ninja nerfed as it now takes fewer points to fully feed an NPC. Carm and Crimson Aruka's aggro sound, true sound from a distance of around 8 yalms and will detect, will obviously detect through sneak because you said they're true sound, dumbass. They're susceptible to bind, wait, and sleep. Due to many circular obstacles scattered around the maps, lava pools, it is fairly easy to continue delivering prisons with several crawlers on you if you have some form of movement speed plus. Crimson Aruga, Aruka's never de -aggro. When passive, Crimson Aruka's move back to their home areas at extremely slow pace. Feed all 12 soldiers. Okay, so basically you have to run back and forth. We don't have any movement speed plus on Red Mage either. And there's... Yeah, there's... Let's see... Two, four... Seven... Nine... There's twelve... Yeah, there's twelve soldiers and they're all spread out. And, uh... You start in the middle of the map. And, uh... Wow, that's really annoying. So I don't think I don't think we'll be getting that done today. Not 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 that one. Nope, nope, nope. Maybe preemptive strike from a Mulja training ground. The objective is to eliminate all of the Mamulja executioners. There are thirteen Mamulja of jobs, blue mage, white mage, and ninja. You do not need to defeat the pooks in the region. Once all Mamulja are dead, you will win. Okay, that one actually sounds pretty straightforward, and I think I could do it. And the reason I think I could do it is because I do Nyes a Lyle in 30 minutes, and like... Um... I'm like DPS. I'm damage dealing specified, like in my merits right now, with full in spell damage. Uh, I've got Red Curry plus one. I've got... Not quite kept gear... I've got like pretty good gear haste. I've got haste. Uh, we'll basically buff up, run in, and kill them all really quickly. But I guess maybe the pucks might get in the way. Oh no, we'll see. Maybe I'm cocky. Maybe these mammals are stronger than all the stuff I fight in Nizel. Which I don't think so, because some of the stuff you have to fight in Nizel is a real pain in the ass. Like, you can get the Eliminate Specified Enemies, which I refer to as, colloquially referred to as Family Objective. And you could have to fight five Soul Flayers for your Floor Objective, and I had that twice in one of my runs. And it was a pain in the ass, but I was able to complete it. And uh, I, was, I actually got up five floors on that run, too. So, like, oh, right, right, right. Um, I need, to, <laughs> I autopiloted like I was meriting. Whoops. Something I always like about Treasures of Aragon, though, is, like, they have this whole mercenary, like, rank system, and it's completely independent from the actual main story of Treasures of Aragon. Like, you don't need any certain rank to, uh... to do... 
the, the storyline for sure is right gone. The basically the mercenary like all the assaults and stuff they gate off the mythic weapon. They're like part of this elaborate thing for the mythic weapons. Like in order to even start a mythic weapon, you need to be captain rank. Then you have to have beaten every boss in another event called Salvage. You have to have beaten Floor 100 of Nizel Isle. Uh, with your runic disc, by the way. Because if you're in a party doing Nizel, only one person's runic disc gets used at a time. Although I think everyone's records the progress now that I think about it. But it, like you have to have gone to Floor 100 and beat it while using your runic disc. Um, you have to have chosen a, uh, they call them vigil weapons for some reason. Um, but it's, this is the base weapon or the mythic weapon that I've been collecting from Nizel. You have to have done that. Um, I think you have to have broken the latent on it, although I'm not 100% sure on that. Although why you would... Be pursuing a mythic weapon without just getting its weapon skill for you in the first place i would never know I, I wouldn't know like if anyone's ever done that for shits and gigs i'm sure somebody has like people always wonder about and try to test this shit out some people even create new characters to test shit like that out so i don't know let's see for mammals eh. I guess in Thunder would be fine, or in Blizzard. I'm gonna go for in Thunder. I don't think they'll resist it. And see, the nice thing about Protect and Shell being 30 minute buffs no matter what, is that when you enter an assault and you buff with them, you have a relative timer on your screen for you. Although obviously you could just look at your clock and be like, oh, okay, it's, you know, 5.50 a.m. and then you can be like, oh, you know. Oh yeah, this is gonna be easy. Also, just once again reminding you that we do not have the option of using trusts for assaults. I guess because they want to keep as much, like, they want to be lenient for storyline missions, but they want to keep as much events requiring more players as possible. They want to incentivize you to try to play with other people as they always kind of have, uh, even though it's kind of garbage that, like, they do. Also, that's you see how much EXP we got. That's the uh, that's the double EXP uh, campaign kicking in. Plus the fact that I have the each ad ring on still. No, no, no. Nope. Hey, put protect on your slut. I'm gonna take your protect from you, you, you slut. Even though I don't really need to take it from you. Yeah, and they've got shell on probably too. Oh, and we're getting accurate by a poop. That's okay though, we can kill the poop too. I probably just kill any poops that aggro me while I'm killing the Mammalja because um, even though they're not part of the objective, like I could sleep them and they would stay asleep for two minutes at a time. But, you know, this is like a really large area, area and there's a lot of poops, and so, like, if I just kept sleeping them, eventually they wake up, and they link, and then suddenly I have too many poops to deal with, and I did not bring re-raise, and therefore I do not want to be risking anything, taking any, taking any risks like that. Ooh, we got an instant stone skin cast from our quick magic on our Dalmatica. That's the second time I've seen that happen. 
I've been waiting for it to happen and waiting for it to happen. And basically, I'm bothering to debuff them because I've only got to cast a couple of debuffs on them. And, uh, it'll make me have to stop and heal myself less. I don't think we're going to have any issues with the timer on this mission, but... Oh, okay. Just reach in my sack and grab some. Yeah, stuff like that happens, you see. I, I don't keep track of how many tool bags I got left. And bada bing, bada boom, suddenly I, I need to whip a tool bag out. Yeah, I mean, I get paralyzed, motherfucker. Okay, that's three mammals out of 13. So we've got to just go around and find the other... 10. Strategy back in the day was to stay up top and range weapon pull them. Uh, I think that's a ninja. Any of the ninjas, we want to just start with Biega, because they always have you send me Nia. And mammal ninjas, they always fight with their bare hands, so that they effectively are dual wielding without having the programmers having to actually program them dual wielding, although I'm sure they could. But, like, it saves them on animation costs, because every... Every mammal has hand-to-hand -hand weapon skills and animations already, and they're just like, you know what, monsters don't need to actually have weapons equipped, even though it look really cool, so... Mammal ninjas just fight with hand-to-hand. -hand. I think it's kind of silly, but... I mean, I think ninja innately has like a D in hand-to-hand, -hand, just like warrior, or like a C- minus or something. Oh, hey, our food wore off. We'll eat another one just because it raises our uh, auto attack damage and our weapon skill damage. And anytime you're doing something where you gotta kill shit, uh, as part of your objective, you know, the, uh, I wonder if I can reach him from up here. Or down here. Nope, can't can't see him. Okay, whatever. Let's see, can I get you Diego without aggroing that puck? Guess we'll find out. Also I wonder if I can silence these. I think they count as notorious monsters, so I don't think I can. But okay, never mind, he came up to me anyway. I don't know how I wound up casting on you. I didn't really mean to. I wanted to do that to you. Why debuff you when I can just kill the shit out of you? Yeah, this this uh, double EXP campaign is pretty nice. Even without the band, we're getting like 2,000 per kill, and we're not even like here to EXP. Like these aren't even EXP mobs. Of course, the conception of EXP. Monsters existing specifically for EXP is kind of a misnomer because, like, or like, I don't know, is that the right term for that? Yeah, whatever. Uh, every monster in the game that's not like a particular notorious monster generally gives EXP. It's just, you know, like, this isn't an EXP camp, we're in an assault. So the purpose of being here is not, um, it's not to. Uh, get AXP, it's to finish the assault.
Damn it, another poop aggroed me. Whatever, I'll settle his ash. Emil's already almost dead, so I'm gonna let him go poop. Man, that didn't kill the poop. These are some sturdy poops. Oh, man, they're Lincoln. Ow. Hey. Cut it out, Lincoln. Kill him, Tom Wick. Kill him, Tom Wick. Thank you. Okay, so that took a lot out of us. why it's a good idea to keep stun skin and aqua veil up because sometimes you just get mobbed and uh aqua veil in particular like it's basically it's a few hits of uh your cast aren't going to get interrupted really so it's really handy That's a ninja again, so... Diego! Paralyzed you! I'm gonna do you one better, I'm gonna give you blind. Red Mage isn't really dodgy, but some of our gear has some pretty good evasion on it, and we've got like moderately high agility. We have a few agility merits even. Um, like we're still, we still don't hold a candle to any of the the dodgy jobs. We do have full full evasion merits and all that, and so if, I didn't put on my right set for debuffing him with flying too. But even so, like it'll cause a few misses here and there. That's just good. That's just good business. Okay, let's see. One's a ninja, one's one's a white mage. Okay, I've made it through your blink nonsense. You jerk, how dare you like actually buff yourself well? For that I shall give you the bio three. Yeah, like, Red Mage has like a C in evasion, or something like that. Oh no, even worse, it has a D. It has a D in evasion. Yeah, so we're, we're not very, uh, we're not very dodgy. I'm pretty sure all these Mamulja are the jobs the developers picked that don't necessarily have high defense, but have a lot of things that get in the way of you um, doing damage to them. Like the white mages have blink, and if they're up long enough, they'll have protect and shell on stone skin. The ninjas have Yususimi, which is four hits. Uh, the blue mages are blue mages. Sometimes I use Bio 3 when I'm solo just because the initial hit of it does so much more than Dia's dot. Um, and it's, it's dot is also stronger than Dia's. And like, I'm pretty sure we're attack capped against these things, so lowering their defense really doesn't matter too much for us. So the extra dot damage while also lowering their attack power is probably the better way to go at this point. Although, honestly, I like Dia 3 as a debuff better. Yeah. 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 
unfortunately for you, I have dual wield and double attack and a sword that has occasionally attacked twice. So. Ah, spoil wind crystals, okay. Alright, uh, we need to refresh. Refresh. And our end spells, and our haste, and our phalanx went down. And. I'm just gonna switch over to end blizzard. Tide of end thunder. Much. I've lost track of how many mammals we've killed. So I haven't lost track of the fact that our inventory is fucking full. We get a lot of random crystals and monster trash doing Nizel. Just because of all the different monsters you wind up fighting. They all drop stuff in there. And uh, that's before you even consider like mystery items and stuff. Yeah, we get more Unity Accolades now, too, because of our Rhapsody key items. That's another good reason to finish. go ahead and finish Rhapsodies. Okay, I'm not sure exactly where to go. I know we've, we've still got a few more to go, because I didn't see the objective get cleared. I assume they're up around the ledges, although I'm not sure if we can actually go everywhere on the ledges from over here. I don't, I don't know the layout of this place very well. It's basically like a uh, closed-off mam mamook. Uh, but we can see white scan here. Let's see. We probably want to go ahead and sneak up. Uh, just to get past pooks. We don't want to waste our time with pooks. We've got like... Our Protect and Shell are at 13 minutes, which probably means we have about 11 or 12 minutes remaining. So the time might be a bit tight. We might actually fail, actually. I'm not sure how many Memmules are left. Oh, there's one. If we can cast on him from down here, we can pull him down here. Alright! Put Dia on you because I like the way it looks. Now there's another white mage one right over there. Diego to wipe his blank. Oh no, not holy. Oh shit, he removed his paralysis. What, what a chad. It's like he knows. It's like he knows I debuffed him or something. Got several different buffs on. Well, your shadows are gone, so you're, you're screwed there, White Mage. Get up out of my out of my house. Or well, your house, but 
I'm taking credit for it being mine. Okay, 10 minute warning. There's our 10 minute warning. Uh, we can use wide scan to check stuff out. There's one over there in the corner. I hope that's the last one, honestly. Because I don't know where the Rune of Transfer is going to... Or completion and it's going to do anything or not. I think he's got a shield, so I think he's a blue mage. Sprout Smack is only a week slow there, buddy. Have to do better than that. Get me. Now, while we're auto attacking and waiting for TP to happen. Oh, he's the only one I see on white scan currently. Oh, yep, here's the last one. Sweet. Okay, plenty of time. Okay. Where did it say? I-7? We're at I-8. So we just run up north, I guess? Or, wait, it looks like it's gonna be... up in that little room or something? Okay, we're just gonna sneak an invisible up so we don't aggro any pooks, and then we're just gonna go up there. And I'll refresh, refresh, just because I know it's about to wear off, and... I like having 8-minute refresh. It's pretty nice. Although, I had slightly higher duration refresh before I put everything into inspell damage. But I gotta say, the inspell damage was worth it. Because, like... Oh, nice. It's ground floor. That's nice. A mystery necklace. I have no idea what that will turn into. Leave the Momojo training grounds. You gain 1650 assault points. And more importantly, that was a brand new assault. So we get... Um, five assault rank points towards our next... Um, our next thingamajig. Yeehaw, and I'm just throwing all this stuff away instead of NPCing it because it's not valuable enough for me to actually care about like running all the way to the NPC for. Let's see, it says that that mystery necklace could appraise into a feather collar, a gorget, plus one, spectacles, or a storm torque. A Storm Torque is a rare exclusive Torque that has one defense, but in Assault you get Evasion plus 7, which sucks. Okay. And Spectacles are a neck piece that has two defense, 7 accuracy, 7 ranged accuracy. Uh, every job except for the heavy armor ones, pretty much. And some of the mages. All in all, a thing we don't really need, because it would only be two, two more accuracy and no store TP compared to our uh, chivalrous chain. But yeah, it's nice to nice to be able to beat another assault pretty easily. I'll look through the other private first class ones and see if there's other ones we can we can do easy. Let's see. Requiem. Destroy undead. An immortal has reported the existence of a large force of undead soldiers. Destroy these undead minions before they attack the Empire enemies. Talent, Boot, Darkling, Dragar, Darkling, Dragar, Dragar, Swervin, Putrid, Immortal Guard. Destroy all undead within the time limit to win this mission. Okay. Doesn't look like it'd be that hard. The only major concern is if you have to fight the ghosts, they can curse you, which will slow down your movement speed. So we'll probably want to. I have a. I think I have a stack of holy water somewhere. Yeah, I got some holy water. So like, every time we fight a ghost, I guess, and where is this at? This is at Periquia, which is 
Yeah, this one. Yeah, see, like, we can't actually do Seagull Grounded. Like, I might be able to do it on Summoner, but I'm pretty sure doing it on Summoner requires a higher level Summoner to do what the people are talking about. Um, it's a Prisoner Escort. Like, I might try to do it at some point, but not, not today. Like I said, I'm going to try to show all assaults on screen, but um, some of them, you know, I'm just not, like, not really here for, you know what I'm saying? Looks like we have to kill four boots, seven Dark Knight Dragars, five Darkling Dragars, two dragons, and then two putrid immortal guards, which I don't know what those are. I assume they're farmers wearing like Sapahi stuff. So it shouldn't be too bad. Especially since we have holy water. If you didn't have access to holy water, I guess either level up higher and sub white mage, or go with white mage slash ninja instead of red mage slash ninja. I mean, your kill speed would be a little bit lower depending on the gear you have for White Mage. But like, I don't think it would be that much slower. Plus you'd be able to cast Banish on stuff. Which I guess wouldn't do anything for White Mage. But... Whatever. And I guess Paladin would also be a decent pick. Because you'd have Holy Circle for uh, Undead Killer. And that would intimidate these guys some of the time. Plus, give you a hearty attack and defense bonus. But, like I said, the main thing is probably the Kursna on the boots. All in all, uh, there's also going to be probably... Uh, the boots will probably have ice spikes, because they're, they're going to be Black Mage Ghost Monsters. But I don't think the Dark Knight Draugars can have Ice Spikes, because I'm pretty sure Dark Knight can't cast Ice Spikes naturally, so... Don't think this one will be that bad. Resting my MP up, because we're going to buff once we're inside, and... We'll be golden. Although, honestly, I probably don't even need full MP. Because when I swap my gear, uh, we'll lose the, uh... Are you ready? Hell yeah. I wonder when they're when they are if they'll ever give in and let people use trusts and assaults. I still wouldn't make a lot of the problem assaults not a problem. But it would enhance kill speed uh, and you could bring other jobs like at lower levels. I'd do these with friends if my friends would do them with me. But all the people I know that still play at 11 are either on other servers uh, and barely play when I play anyway, or they're on this server, but they're only interested in the newest content because that's the only thing they see as worthwhile to do. And even then, they think it's like barely worthwhile. It's like not even on their radar as like a... Uh, Huge accomplishment, I guess. We got Wather Wetter going on, but it's Fire's Day. These are undead, so I think in fires our best bet against them, regardless of the weather. They're probably fairly resistant to ice and water and stone. We want Bar Blizzard and Bar Paralyze uh, just for the Ice Spikes that's going to be on the boots. 
Bar virus might not be a bad idea either. I think the Draugrs might have some sort of virus attack, if I remember right. They have some, some unique stuff to them that skeletons in other normal areas do not have. I know that much. Alright, let's see where we're at. Okay, we're... Running through a weird, mazy sort of place. I don't know where the the uh, rune of release or whatever pops up for this either. Darkling Dragar. Okay, our first our first motherfucker. Oh, our first motherfuckers. Okay, I accept. I'll just save TP on this one and kill the next one really quickly. Horror Cloud is a slow that I think is unique to Dragars. Forty-six, forty-six. Damage that's out of this world for level seventy-five. Them Abyssia numbers. I know I said it before, but they retooled calculations, uh, and like we have more player power thanks to the expanded merits and stuff as well than was ever possible at seventy-five. And then, on top of all that, we have, like, the best gear available at 75, so, like, we're, we're good to go here. We're, uh, we're in business. We're awesome. Okay, the first of four boots. Oh, the first two of four boots, okay. Let's see if we can't land paralysis. Let's root four. Oh, no ice spikes, huh? Did not land paralysis. But it'll be okay as long as we land slow, I guess. If I were a higher level, I would really love to get um, oh, there's the ice spikes. Yeah, if I were a higher level, I would love to get Addle on these guys, because it uh, slows down how fast they can cast spells, giving you a higher chance to interrupt the spell, and also uh, better prepare for the damage and stuff. Man. I knew they were going to resist ice stuff, but like... I've got full magic accuracy merits and stuff. I wonder if they're actually resi partially resilient to fire, or if they're just partially magical to them. Because my end spells are doing lower damage than normal. Alright, we got through two boots without being cursed. That's... that's something. Damn it. I need to get myself some more remedies. Oh, 
Also, you might notice your Joy is doing uh, significantly lower damage than your other sword. Um, I, I explained it when I got the dang thing, but it's a rapier-type sword, and it inflicts piercing damage except during weapon skills. So, uh... Draugr's resist piercing damage. That's what I'm trying to say here. All skeletons do. Or most skeletons do. Some skeletons are an exception. But only some. Not all. I wonder if I could kill his Wyvern with a nuke. Ah, yeah. uh, really? Double attack proc and I missed the, the other three hits? I was hoping Bio 3 plus a single Thunder 3 would, would take care of that Wyvern by the time I finished the Draugr. <laughs> but. Good mic. Not quite. I actually had to hit it. Can't for casting on it. What an injustice. I think at the rate we're going, we should have a similar finish time um, to the uh, the Mamulja assault we just did before this. Ooh, Thunder Weather just started. I wonder if that will beef up the end thunder I just put on to see if they were resisting fire or if it was the water weather or what what I'm pretty sure end spells are like less affected by like daytime and or well day of the week and uh stuff like that. Oh, my food's wearing off again. What I get for putting on uh, the refresh sanction. I'd actually been uh, choosing enhanced meal duration and then eating my food to make it double in duration and then asking for sanction again and putting on refresh because the food duration stays. Okay, they're still a little bit resistant to magic, um, it looks like. Because normally my, my hits with my hollow earring, they do 141 to anything that's not weak to magic. There's some fans uh, that you have to fight in both kill enemy leader and eliminate specified enemy in Nightfall. And uh, some of them, some of the NMs, they, uh, they're like Carmine Custard or whatever Custard. They're permanently, like, in their resist physical damage, but take enhanced magic damage mode. And that causes, on those, my regular hits do like 25 to 30 to 40, like 25 to 40 damage. But my in spell hit does 220 damage. So, like, if I get a double attack on my first sword and a double attack on the joy use or an oat proc, then, uh, 
it deals uh, 880 damage plus whatever my melee hits did. Which occasionally with like crits and stuff, um, I get like into the 70s and so like I do over a thousand damage in a single attack round and it's amazing for this level. Not so amazing later on. Uh, I I went on a forum and I asked, hey, what should I merit on on Red Mage? And opinions are split, like for a group two. Some people say, oh yeah, you should probably just do magic accuracy and immuno break. And other people are like, no, 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 you just need to max your enfeebling duration and your enhancing durations. Because that's the main stuff Red Mage brings to a party. And like, because like some people only think in terms of the end game. They're not thinking in terms of like what I'm actually doing. And then someone else is like, uh, if you have the best red mage sword in the game, then you, you've got to do wind spell damage. But if you're not if you're not doing any of that stuff, then you should like the only like the only thing I've been told to avoid was don't merit physical accuracy. Oh, hey, they're doom toads. They're not they're not actually huh. was not expecting that. Probably should have just looked closer at the. Uh, Now these guys are taking full damage from my end spells. In fact, they might even be taking enhanced damage. They're also weak to slashing. So you'll still see your your main hand sword do far more than Joyous. I mean, if you're even... Like, if you were somehow playing along with me on your own red mage or something. Which I would not expect anyone to do. Like, one, my mind is impossible to understand when it comes to, like, my, my the way I'm progressing the game. And two, like, no one likes to limit themselves. Most people who play this game, if they get into it at all, they just go ahead and max, max one job at 99 and sort of go around on it. Which is honestly better for your sanity. So, eh, could be worse. I don't know what causes it to jump up to 155. I assume that's like some... I like try to match the end spell to the day of the week or to the weather, and I assume that that's some... Um, like extra damage proc from, from the weather or the the day. Because usually, usually when you get a weather bonus or a day bonus on a spell, it's plus 10% damage. And since it's adding exactly 14 damage, you know, that's about... That's about a 10%, you know, proc, whatever, so. Of course, it doesn't always happen with everything. Like, sometimes, you know, I match I match the element of the day or the, the weather, and uh, nothing happens. Nothing special happens. Like, I don't get any, any damage variance at all. Okay, so these things resist par paralysis, so we're just gonna go with slow and be a three. Ooh, he started with freeze. I love, I love you. That's gonna be such a big waste of time for you, there, guy. Oh wow, he act, he must have some sort of crazy fast cast. Wow. Okay, yeah, these things are resilient to magic. Not just fire, just magic in general. Paralyzed. Just get the TP and let me savage play him. Damn it! Well, there's only one more of these things, and we still haven't had to use a holy water yet, so I guess I'll count my blessings. Come on, man. Yeah, even if bar paralyzed doesn't stop the paralysis, it usually makes it gives you a partial resist and so like you're you don't you aren't interrupted by paralysis as much sometimes paralysis is the worst debuff in the game that you can be given and other times if you got a good enough of a partial resist it's just a minor annoyance But I think of it, I usually think of it as a very deadly thing. Cause back in the day, 
especially on like Warrior and other jobs that have like no innate magic evasion or ability to increase their magic evasion through like barrier spells. Um, you know, it's just like you get paralyzed and all your job abilities, you can't use them. You know, and also back in the day, you know, you couldn't like, like food and items could get consumed just by being paralyzed, so. There's that whole aspect of things. I wonder if I could sleep his wyvern. Probably can. Very much like to. If I can't sleep at all, I'll just kill it. I'll just jump to kill it. Like, what's he gonna do? Resummon it? Okay, completely resist the spell. Then, he, then you die, wyvern. Oh, my phalanx is worn off. Okay, I'll do a rebuff. Why not? We've got about 13 minutes left, you know, in the assault. I wonder if any of these assaults will be ones that I can just complete really quickly. Like, not making it come down to the wire and whatnot. I don't imagine so, but... I mean, there was that one private second class one where, you know, by RNG's sake, we open if we open the right box, you know, we finish it really early. Which I, you know, when I recorded it this time around or whatever, it was the second box. I remember that much. Oh god, excuse me. Aggroed me because my my I'm bleeding. And my body's trying to force unwanted cops on me. Because I'm speaking at length. And apparently my throat does not like that. Oh, you barely like it, viewer. <laughs> What do you mean? Don't tell. Don't tell you what you like. Very well. Very well. Okay, we're still not done. I wonder if we can see anything on white scan. Okay, it looks like we've got two more rooms left of stuff. And we're about to get our 10 minute warning. So, I guess it'll depend on how long it takes to kill these things, and then how long, how far away the, the rune of release is. There's the 10 minute warning. Might be a good idea to bring an Icarus Wing. Might not seem like a lot, but you see how much damage our Savage Blades do. And if you could, like, speed up, you know, the, the killing of these things by even just one monster killed, you know, uh, like a minute sooner or whatever, that, that could be all the difference in the world. One of my nice little runs, that, that was, like, the difference between winning and not. Sometimes... I leave the assault in Nizul with like the 30 second warning on screen. I mean, like leave it and, and actually win. <laughs> Your sleep got deflected from my shadow. Also, suffice to say, with, like, I guess, when all said and done, my inspell merits added about, like, they were doing 95 unresisted before merits, and
an after merits and a hollow earring. Uh, damage went up by 46. So. I wonder if we can pull the wyverns first without pulling the uh, draugr. Intimidated by the wyverns present. Oh, he's got dragon killer somehow. That's dumb. How does a, how does a wyvern have dragon killer? We get dragon affinity from our crimson mask, and I don't understand why a an undead wyvern would have dragon killer. I guess technically they set the wyvern shop dragoon, and that would innately give it dragon killer. Because every monster needs a job slot. But as long as we're not wearing the crimson mask, then the wyvern can't intimidate us anyway. And that's really the biggest downside to the Crimson set. That's why I probably shouldn't even be wasting money getting Aspen Pops. I want a Crimson Scale Mail body, because I think it looks cool. But I can also augment it to have haste. And it also has some innate stats on it that are pretty nice for like Dark Knight looking and stuff. Weird, weird stuff like that. It's like Red Mage, Dark Knight, Blue Mage and stuff, they can all use it. It also reduces breath damage taken by 10%. But, like, it gives you Dragon Affinity. Any piece of the Crimson set gives you Dragon Affinity. Which makes you... It essentially makes you a... It, it, the game acts as if you are a Dragon-type creature. Oh, and hey, mission objective complete. How about that? Alright, where did it say? It said... F9. We're at F7. So we just gotta go... Depth south. Yeah, okay. Not too hard, not too bad. I love the assaults like this. The assaults that are just kill shit, like, they're usually pretty easy to beat. Because uh, their, ob their objective is, you know, what you do in normal gameplay a lot. It's like what you, all your gear goes towards. It's what all the crafting, you know, and food and stuff goes towards. It's like... This is the main main draw of the game, is, is fighting monsters. And, uh... I mean, but come to think of it, like, without the gear we have, like, particularly the martial analysts, uh, we would be taking way too long. Uh, without the martial analysts allowing us to have uh, super strong savage blades, even at 100... 1,000 TP or whatever. Um, it would just be... It's just... Okay, I want to throw stuff away because I, I want to get those because they sell better. At least I think they sell better. What does the high ether tank... Oh, high ether suck though. I wonder how much we can get for it. Either way, we, we won. We got more salt points. Yay, salt points. Although they're kind of pointless for us unless we want to get something out of here for lock style. Although there's actually... I don't remember if it's Periquia or if it's Illusory Atoll. One of them has the Yigit Gomlek or whatever, which is a body piece that's like... It has some magey stats on it, but then like the main draw on it is it's like song spell casting time minus 10%. Which is not like phenomenal for Bard, but back in the day, the way people made players play Bard in EXP parties was more or less as a puller. You wouldn't have a weapon at all, you just have a Terra staff. So you wouldn't be engaging at all, and you would just basically, you know, you were the, like, the camp would be set up, and you would run out and grab the monster with one of your quick songs, like Foe's Requiem. Or Elegy, like Battlefield Elegy or Carnage Elegy. And, uh... That would be, you know, pretty, pretty cool. Like, because Elegy slows the monster, 
And you'd be subbing Ninja too, so like you'd have shadows. Uh, alternatively, you'd be subbing White Mage and have Blink and Stone Skin. But Ninja sub would be better for being a puller. And basically, you'd, you'd pull a, a monster to camp with Elegy, and they'd take it off you. Then you'd go pull another monster immediately, uh, unless you had to do song buffs, because your song buffs last like two minutes or whatever, or two and a half minutes. Then you would, like, you pull a monster to camp, you, you buff everyone, then you go pull. Well, actually, I guess the way it would start, ideally, would is everyone would get to camp, and uh, I guess I guess your mages would have to buff first too. So I guess there'd be a period of buffing, and then you'd run out, and uh, you'd you'd play you'd play mages ballad and mages ballad two for the mages while they're buffing or whatever. And if the camp was big enough, then the mages would stand far enough away from the melee that you could buff them with mages ballad, and then you would move up to the melee, buff them with madrigal and minuet or double march and then you'd run out and elegy a monster bring it back to camp they'd take it off for you to kill you'd run out without even without even engaging it any further elegy another monster bring it back to camp if they're not done with the first monster you use foe's lullaby on it if they're almost done with with the first monster uh or done with the first monster already then you've got a good party but if not, then like you sleep sleep the second monster and keep it asleep. Whenever it wakes up, you alternate the two lullabies. And ideally, what happens is they finish the first monster, or almost finish the first monster by the time you get the second monster there and slept. And then you run out before they even, like, as they engage the second monster, get another monster, bring it back, sleep it, repeat. Right? Basically, you bring monsters... As Bard, you bring monsters to camp, and you keep them control under control until the party's ready to fight them. And, uh, some really cocky Bards would sometimes bring multiple enemies at once, because Horde Lullaby sleeps multiple enemies at once. But, basically, fast cast for songs is really, really good on gear. But, uh, let's see... Private first class assaults. Private first class assaults. Lamia number 13. Eliminate Lamia number 13. Your mission is to hunt down Lamia number 13, a fearsome creature known to have performed vile experiments on the countless corpses of her enemies. Let's see, how hard was this one? Lamia number 13 uses standard Lamia TP abilities, as well as Belly Dance and AoE Charm. Lamia number 13 is followed and assisted by three charmed NPCs, Fallen Volunteer, Fallen Imperial Wizard, and Fallen Imperial Trooper. Their charm status can be removed using Dispel, Magic Finale, Dark Shot, Lunar Roar, Geist Whale, or Blank Gaze, and they will attack Lamia number 13. They can be recharmed if Belly Dance is, belly dance is directed against the NPCs. Lamia number 13 is a Ranger type monster. Fallen Imperial Trooper is Dark Knight. Fallen Imperial Wizard is Black Mage type, and Fallen Volunteer is Warrior type. The NPCs may be slept while they are charmed, and casted on with cures and non-party buffs while not under Lamia's control. However, putting buffs on NPCs or players may not be wise, as Dispel will often remove these buffs instead of removing the charm effect. If all of the living players and NPCs are charmed, Lamia number 13 will regenerate her health if not under the effect of a dot spell. Okay, so it seems pretty simple. Uh, I guess we could try that one. It might be kind of risky. But I think I could finish it before we get to an hour and a half. Possibly. Possibly. Not, not, not for sure. But possibly. And then we're only 10 assault points or whatever away from uh, being a superior private. Which would let us buy Luz Offspring with Imperial Standing for Corsair. Which we have no purpose for because we have no friends. We're also not high level. 
but we would eventually have a purpose for it. It doubles the uh, range of um, Phantom Roll, is what, what the Lose Offspring does. Oh, yeah. I guess the other great thing about these Rhapsodies uncapping assaults is if I do want any of the assault gear, I can just spam these assaults for the uh, the regional assault points. Um, she pretty cool. She pretty good. I don't think I have to, but I think um, it might be wise for me to use chain spell dispel on these ads, because I could dispel them a lot faster that way and not have to worry about um, getting hurt as much. Although I don't know how much HP Lamia number 13 has. I remember this assault, though. I remember um, people arguing whether whether or not we needed to get a bard in the party instead of just a red mage. We wound up having both anyway, but like people argued about whether or not regular dispel would work because the charmed monsters appear to be undead. <laughs> Pretty sure if we get like one or two Savage Blades off on uh, the Lamia, she would just die. I go for Infire because that's the element of the day, but water weather might start really easily. Says she's a Ranger type mom. I don't know what would be best to use bar spell wise. I have one of their TP moves that removes a random piece of gear is water elemental though. Other monsters might also be um, lurking about. I don't fully remember, but there, there's what we gotta kill. Let me number thirteen and, and three, three guys. So I guess if anything, we wanna. Um, how do we even get over there? I say we dispel the black mage first, and we should be able to tell because they wear pretty distinguishing gear. Uh, but one's a dark knight, one's black mage, and all that. Where did they go? Okay, they're up north. Okay, so that's the black mage, I'm pretty sure. We'll aggro all of them by doing this, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so we got charm off of wizard. I think they're go yeah, they're going after the Lamia. Oh yeah, oh they got bio on them. But it's not my bio.
they're not doing very much damage to her, but I guess that's so that you can't, uh... Also, if I remember right, I think Belly, belly uh, Dance is a Gaze. If you turn around in time, I think you don't get Charmed. I could be wrong. Okay, yeah, so they're all Charmed again. Let's get the Black Mage. Thanks, boys. Yeah, see, their names turn white after you char uncharm them. Alternatively, while they're charmed, you can actually probably kill them. Because, um, let's see, H8? We're at H8. Where, okay, is it like across the way a little bit? Okay, it's across the way a little bit. That was a pretty easy assault. I love when they're easy. Mo mo there's a total of, you know, five assaults every rank, and the ranks are Private Second Class, Private First Class, Superior Private, Lance Corporal, Corporal, uh, I think Sergeant, and then Chief Sergeant, uh, Second Lieutenant, First Lieutenant, and Captain. I think there's 10 ranks. Uh, I might have left one out before Captain, because Captain doesn't... I don't think Captain introduces any new ones. The last assaults, the last new assaults come with um, First Lieutenant. Um, but, uh, yeah. 1980 assault points, how about that? How nice. Okay, let's see what else. What else? What other private first class assaults might we be. Do we even have left, I guess? Okay, so we did Lil Mia No 13, we did Requiem. We did. Preemptive Strike. So we've got Oracle Come Survey, which I believe is the one where you run around with pickaxes and they randomly pop up. And kick your mind ears, become hostile. What do we gotta do? Find the ore vein. This gold this assault is to mine up an oracle come ore from the mining port scattered around the map. As soon as the ore has been mined up, the kick current, currents will become hostile. However, you can sneak past them with invisible. Uh, talk to Mulawaha to begin, and he will give you a temporary pickaxe key item. Please note that normal pickaxes cannot be used for this assault. Searching for a mining point and then click on it. The following will occur. You obtain the Oracle Comb Ore. Uh, your pickaxe breaks and you have to go back to Mulwawa. A mineral worm spawns with aggro on you. The mineral worms have very low HP but de decent offense. As the worms will not cast on you unless you run out of range, However, they are capable of casting earth magic like all worms of the appropriate level. Uh, you might mine up a pebble or zinc ore instead, which will go into the party's treasure pool. You are unable to mine anything. 
When you get the ore, the Kirken miners become hostile, and it's recommended to just go ahead and use invisible and go back to the starting NPC. Once the person with the Oracle come ore comes back to Molwaha, then the assault is won. Okay, well, uh, I guess we could try that one. Um, seems like it might be one of those ones where just running around runs you out of time because like there's it's one of those ones back in the day where you would split up gal me you oh she's a hot elven oh and she's japanese of course of course master level 24 very very powerful very very amazing There are actually a significantly high amount of Japanese players on this server. And that's probably one of the reasons I'm going to go ahead and move to my brother's server sometime next month, maybe. I'd like to stay here and play again with Crusant and Vox, but like... Vox is a busy woman, and... Like probably easier to get help from my brother than it is from her with getting this character along for the purpose of the let's play. Yes. I don't think... A lot of my friends, like, it's not that they're not supportive of, like, me doing this let's play. It's just, you know, they don't... They've got better things to watch, you know? They've already played through this game. I can't teach them anything new. And they either still play or play 14 and don't care about this game. So it's like, eh. But also, look, I got Zenith Myths finally. They finally had Cursed Myths on the auction house. And I finally got them and augmented them. So they're really good for my nuking setup. And they're in my intelligence set. Although I haven't had the occasion yet, since I've just been doing assaults, to actually magic burst something and see if I do a uh, big, you know, crazy... Cut your origin. Okay, that's worthless. Gorge plus one. That probably NPC for a bit. That's kind of funny. Gorge plus a spark spear. That... Oh, okay, so that one that has the additional effect lightning damage when you have a battery ammo. The appraisal guy is more or less the epitome of that Gravity Falls meme. Wow, this is completely worthless. You know, like, kid, kids reading the scroll or whatever. The secret scroll, and it's just like... Oh, Spark Spear doesn't sell for Jack. Gorget plus one. Yeah. Gorget plus one is, is a total insult. I wish it was a normal Gorget. If it was a normal Gorget, I would just keep it. Because um, I haven't done the farming for the sea organs yet, because I've been more caring about getting mythic weapons. Because I want to like lump things that I do together. I want to get all the mythic weapons, and then I'm gonna go farm organs and sea and Altayu and uh, break the mythic latents at the same time. Since I need so many organs, like I'm just gonna like go ham, you know. But, uh, yeah. Alright, my man, lay it on me. Give me some assault tags. Oh, snap, it's already 7 a.m. Mm, uh, well, let's see if we can't get this one last assault out of the way within the next, uh, well, you know, the next 30 minutes here. Which is the hard recording limit, anyway. I will eat a red curry bun for this, in case I get worm aggro, which I probably will. But yeah, this is another, like, RNG-based assault, more or less, when you're solo. Because, like, you might get... You might get the Oracle come on the first mining point you try. Or your pickaxe might break. And then you go get another pickaxe. And then you go to the next point. 
and so on and so forth. And then the rune of release is probably in a different spot. Wait, no, it says the start point and NPC and rune of release are all in the same spot. Okay, that's good at least. The guy you gotta go back to is just where it ends. So that's, that's where it begins and where it ends. That's good. But I think I remember trying to solo this assault on my other character and timing out and getting really annoyed because it was an easy assault. Man, the news is suddenly on loud downstairs. My pop has awoken, and I need to go to sleep. But I'm having too much fun in my nostalgia trip. Please just take me into the assault. Come on now. Yeah, if we actually do manage to win this assault, then that's four out of five assaults already won. And, like... Me just doing Nizel for more mythic weapons since I only have about half of them now uh, will probably get me enough to get another rank. And then when I get another rank, I can show you more assaults. And all the ones we don't do, when I get up to item level or when I like move to my brother's server or something, or if I can somehow manage to convince Vox to come with me to finish up my assaults because I'm almost captain or something, then I... Uh, Will. Of course, who knows? Maybe maybe I'll be playing enough that I'll actually make a friend of my own or something. Well, like a new friend, I guess. Who's more active. Although, any new friends I make are going to be kind of weird because, like, they're just going to be wondering, like, dude, why don't you just level to 99 and just get item level and make everything easy? And it's like, well, it's not that I don't want to do that, but, you know, it's just... I guess I should have done Bar Silence if I'm going to be going up against uh, worms, possibly. But, oh well. Also, sorry if Assault bore you or something. Uh, I know they're kind of like... They must sort of seem at least a little bit like busy work, right? Because like... Okay. Obtained temporary item pickaxe. And now he's got to go places. Mining point. Dun, 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 dun. And it's probably not any of the ones that are close to him, but there's no way to know until you try. You find nothing. The mining point's still there. You find nothing. You find nothing. Is the mining point gonna go away? You find a pebble. Find nothing. You find nothing. And finally, the mining point went away. Okay, cool. So there's one of the miners that's going to become hostile whenever we find the Oracle come. I guess they're here to try to basically take advantage of mercenaries or something. Or maybe secretly working for, like, the Seagull Freight Tree. No real way to know, I mean. Assaults are just kind of random with what you fight, you know. I mean, they're not totally random, but it's just like... Anytime it's kick Karen, it's just like, why are the kick Karen being so hostile towards us? Like, they're not skilled fighters or anything. They're usually like thieves or bandits or whatever. Oh look, there's one right by this mining point. So if, if I do get the Oracle come, I'll probably have to fight him. But I'm fully expecting my pickaxe to break. You find nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. You find nothing. You find nothing. You 
find nothing. We find nothing. You find a pebble. You find nothing. And the mining point leaves. Okay, cool. So on onwards to the next mining point. I mean, if there is the next one back here, there's not. Okay. So, there's elevation differences, and we'll have to loop back around, I guess. It's kind of annoying. Probably means it would have been better if I had gone north or something. Of course, every time you come into one of these assaults, even though the area looks the same, the layout of the map is usually different. And I probably said that before in earlier assault videos. But... Yeah. Oh, you says you're a miner. Why aren't you mining, Kikarin Miner? Is there a mining point back there? Nope, doesn't look like it. Okay, so. It's looking like... This map is marked weird, in my opinion. Mining point. Okay, so if we get it here, we're going to have to run all the way back up and around anyway. Because uh, there's no, like, ramp up to that guy. You find a pebble. Oh, it's a worm. Hello, worm. I'm going to kill you now. I didn't even need to paralyze you. It's overkill. You can't mine here right now. There's a giant worm in the hole. Dun dun dun. Move out of my way, worm. Move. Despawn. Go away. You find nothing. You find nothing. What a riveting assault. There goes the point. Oh, wait, nope, that's like through a wall somewhere. It's not actually close by. Sometimes the targeting thing can do that. Like if you just bring it up with the X button, it'll just target the nearest thing to you regardless of like walls in the way. I don't really know how that happens, but it does. And it's interesting to me. Come on, give me the oracle come more. Give, show me potato salad. I said, show me potato salad. Your temporary pickaxe breaks. Wow, so we have to run all the way up and around until we get to the hole where, which we can drop in and get a new pickaxe from the motherfucker. Oh, this is going to be fantastic. We're going to time out. We're going to hit the hard recording limit. And I'll... I'll, uh... <laughs> I'll eat my hat, because I'm pretty sure I said at the beginning of this one that it might be a shorter one. But I lied. I'm a liar. 
Come on, stop it. I really wish I had gotten Crimson uh, Creases from Kieran. He has the ability to drop Wormer, le Wormel, the uh, Wormel Legging Abjuration or whatever, or Wormel. Wormel legs, something like that. It goes to the Crimson Queases, and the Crimson Queases are, you know, they're part of the Crimson Armor set for the leg slot, and they give plus 12% movement speed. And uh, they were considered, like, the dream item for every Red Mage Paladin and Dragoon, Dark Knight. Everyone that could wear those things wanted them, because they wanted to be able to run faster. Okay, dude. Give me another pickaxe. Oh, look. A mining point has returned. Should we mine there because we can? Because it's random? Or should we go somewhere else? Let's mine here, because why not? Oh, another worm, huh? Oh, my end spells wore off. Son of a bitch. Oh, my haste is about to wear off, too. I'm trying worm, so let's go for an arrow. Also, worm, I don't have time for your shit, so die. And this is what I mean. This is exactly what I remember happening. I just kept getting worms and having my pickaxe break, and I never found the. I never even got the ore. will come. I, ugh. If we get to the like one hour fifty-five minute mark and I haven't gotten it, I'm just gonna give up and tell you what what the result was. Cause like. There's nothing special that happens, right? Like, I find this Oracle come, then I cast Invisible, and I run back around and drop down to the Blue Mage and give it to him. And then it's like, mission, you know, mission succeeds, and dicks, and pebbles, and stuff. But on the up, on the up, up and up, because I get assault tags every 10 minutes, I can just keep trying this one until RNG blesses me and I beat it. So this one's definitely doable solo, which is just annoying. Break my pickaxe, I double dog dare you, you motherfucker. Say what again? Say pebble again, motherfucker. <laughs> Kinda wish they'd change this assault to just like have a guaranteed spot where you get the oracle come. Oracle is one of those words that, like, when I see it on, when I saw it on paper for the first time, it looks so ridiculously exotic to me. And I was like trying to say it, and I was like, "Oh, oh, ritual chum, or ritual chum, or whatever." And my brother's like, "Oh, you mean Oracle come?" And I was like, "Oh, uh, the CHs are all K's. Why didn't they spell it with K's?" Yeah. All right, we're halfway up the slope. Doop 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 doop. Just give me the fucking rock, damn it. Just give me the goddamn rock and let me win the fucking assault. Come on now. Come on now. Obey me. Obey me. Obey me. Give me the oracle come. You son of a bitch. I wonder what the odds of getting it are, or whatever. It's like, this is one of those assaults, like I already said, you just have everyone fan out at the beginning. Everyone talks to the blue mage and gets a pickaxe, and everyone fans out. You have six people looking. 
And it's just random about who gets it. Oh, fantastic. Our pickaxe broke again. What do you know? I think what I'll do is I'll talk to him and I'll just come all the way back up here first. And that way if I get really bad luck and have the pickaxe break immediately, I can just jump back right back down. Because, like, I haven't mined from that mining point before. Show me potato salad, Mawaha. Also, who names their kid Mawaha? What a rube. Yeah, you see the mining points just keep respawning. And it's like, I could I could mine there, but every time I mine, there's a small chance my pickaxe breaks. So I might as well run back up around all the way again, just in case it does. And then, like, it's also really close to him, so if I wind up getting the Oracle come, then I can just, you know, whatever... I'll swing my picket here, actually. Because the mining, the mining spot is in a different spot. Chaos! Also, I told you I was a liar. Yeah, give me nothing. Give me nothing. Give me n nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. I wonder how many mining chances this, these things are good for. Okay, that seems to be one, two, three, four. Was that eight? It's either seven or eight. Okay, whatever. Okay, we're going, we're, we're just going up now. We're going up. We're going up to that next mine point. Yeah, we're halfway through on the assault time itself. So I still have a pretty good chance. I guess. I'm on my third pickaxe. But in all honesty, I only want to record for like another seven minutes tops. So... If you're already bored of watching this, feel free to just turn away at this point. I, I do not blame you. Of course, if you watch this far, then you are a rare breed indeed. Or possibly Colby, who has it open on like the work computer and uh, is just so happens to have unmuted it and looked away from whatever he was actually watching. Kill the mineral eater. What is that? Four worms now? Now it's despawning. We can rebuff our, our buffs that matter for killing them quickly. Potato salad. Give me the shit. Well, that is shit. Pebbles are shit. Come on now. Get real. Another worm? Are you serious? Rebuff stone skin. Why not? Ah, 
how many fucking worms in a row do I have to kill at this fucking point? Just give me the oracle gun. Grief. And there was a linger, it like lingered right there, and I thought for a second, ooh, wait, is there, is there like a way to go behind that? Like, is there any, any, oh, there's another, oh, but there's not a, there's not a mining point behind it, okay. I wonder what it takes for a mining point to respawn. Oh, we got the 10 minute warning on the assault. Uh, it's like the four minute warning for us, as far as my recording goes. Yeah. I have a feeling I'm just gonna time out, like, off camera. Oh, you know what? We haven't been down that way, have we? Good reason, apparently. I'm not seeing any mining points. Where was the mining point? You who mining point? Where were you? Mining point? Mining point. Oh, fantastic. The best. The absolute best. I went I went farther away. I mean I guess that could have happened before, but god damn it man. What an annoying assault. Aziz, a pickaxe, please. You find nothing. 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 Oh, there it goes. Oh, seven. Well, folks, we're almost... We're almost out of time here. Both in the assault and for the recording. So we'll go to the next mine point and dig at it. And if I get a worm, I'm just going to stop the recording. And... Uh, if I get the oracle come, I will celebrate 
and let you know next time about whether I got back to the guy in time. Yeah, this is kind of like an assault that could become more exciting with more people because like you all fan out and you find the ore a lot sooner and then suddenly, you know, all the kick are hostile. So just one of you has to get back to the dude. And that's a worm. Hello, worm. Well, thanks for watching. Stay safe and have a great day. And I will complete Oracle Come Survey on my own time outside of the recordings because you get the gist of it right R RNG is gonna RNG so until then uh, like I said stay safe and have a great day and uh, thanks for watching